Welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. The Lord be with you. We're glad that you're able to be with us today. Our service is the service of Matins, page 219 in the Lutheran Service Book. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us Worship Him. Our office hymn is Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, And make our hearts your place of rest. Come with your grace and heavenly aid, And fill the hearts which you have made. To you, the Counselor, we cry. To you, the gift of God most high. The font of life, the fire of love. The soul's anointing from above. In you, with graces sevenfold, we, God's almighty, and behold, while you with tongues of fire proclaim to all the world his holy name. Your light to every thought impart and shed your love in every heart. The weakness of our mortal state with deathless might invigorate. Drive far away our wily foe, and your abiding peace bestow. With you as our protecting guide, no evil can with us abide. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you from both as three in one, that we your name may ever bless, and in our lives the truth confess. Praise we the Father and the Son, and Holy Spirit with them one, and may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit 
flow. Our Old Testament reading comes to us today from Isaiah, the 45th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him, that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places. That you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. St. Paul writes, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. In Jesus' name, Amen. My good Christian friends, what's the most complicated word in English? According to the editors of the Oxford English Dictionary, the most complicated word in our language is run. Well, if it's not the most complicated, it's at least the most difficult to translate to bring the meaning of. It is a three-letter word with 604 to 5 meanings. Well, so far, maybe one or a couple more have just run through your mind right now. The text of the report says, Believe it or not, the three-lettered word run yields as many as 604 to 5 different meanings, and this is only for the verb. The most recent edition of the dictionary used 75 columns for this word alone. So why is that? The answer lies in contextual meanings. Besides the most obvious meaning of gathering your feet at a quick pace, run can also be used in measurement. In other contexts too, for example, have a listen on this paragraph. When you're talking about the length of your rug, you will say how it runs for two meters. When you purchase this cotton runner, the transaction at the cashier required you to run up a bill of 50. On your way to the store, you had to take the regular bus that runs from your home to the shopping mall because you had run through your cleaning supplies and ran out of groceries. Unfortunately, the bus was running very late and the waiting time ran for 40 minutes. As a noun, run is most commonly used to imply physical activity, for sure. However, it can also be used to suggest the continuity in certain contexts, such as the run of a certain emotion, a form of transport, an opportunity, a situation, or a condition. For instance, the morning run you take before breakfast is entirely different from the morning school run one takes to drop off kids. If you have a trial run before the actual test, you will have a clear run of coming first.
In short, it can be used in almost every context. In economics, it's when a sudden rise in demand leads to a run to the banks. In music, it's the long-run musical at West End with scores filled with uh, amazing runs and melodic leaps. The list almost could go on forever. So as we gather our thoughts about what, what we just learned, we see that the word run seems to be able to run up to almost endless meanings. Before run, the most difficult uh, word for the Oxford Dictionary was set. Now there's another three-letter word in our language that seems to be endless, to have endless meanings. I'm talking about God. As we run through our day and we pay attention to what is, it's around us, it seems that God has billions of meanings, almost one for each person on planet Earth. I ran into a website about archaeology that runs a story with this title, How the Jews Invented God and Made Him Great. The God of the Old Testament started out as just one of the many deities of the ancient Israelites. Couldn't that title be applied to the thousands of man-made religions of history? How so-and-so invented God? And of our day? I'm pretty sure it can. And it's run runs on and on. This connects to our Bible lessons for today. Isaiah chapter 45, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and Matthew chapter 22. But first, on Psalm 96, we read, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. All the gods of peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. God's name was considered so holy that Yahweh was hardly said out loud. They would use Elohim or Adonai instead. And here on Psalm 96, God is proclaimed above all other God, gods which actually do not even exist. Thus we need to have a precise definition of him to be contrasted with all the other ones. It is not just a matter of context, as it seems to be in the case of many circumstances of our day. That is, if God means so-and-so to you, so-and-so it is. The helper, a good guy, energy, luck, serendipity, all and everything. The list would easily outscore the word run by a landslide. Then our Old Testament text today, Isaiah chapter 45, adds more to it. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Here, we ran out of all the millions of definitions and are left with only one God. We run into Yahweh saying through the prophet that we, what we call other gods, they actually don't even exist. So there is only one God. We we should run in that direction and stick only to this definition of him. The epistle for today, Thessalonians, help us for that matter too. And Paul writes to them, And how you turn to God from idols to serve the true and living God and to wait from, for his Son from heaven. And in today's Gospel, Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is showing to the religious leaders of the time the difference between him and Caesar. He draws a line between what a human human God looks like and him. Because Caesar was considered by many to be a God, and many Caesars would demand divine worship of themselves. Well, leaders of old, how many times do you hear the word idol these days connected to human beings? More than a couple, I am sure of that. So we need to realize that in the end, a God is everything you place your heart and your faith upon. It may be your possessions, your friends, your assets, your wisdom, people, places, things. Family may become an idol. Even life and health may be one. That's why some people mock Christian faith saying, well, if your God really exists, why are you so sick? as if life and health will be values which would be above God himself. When it comes to the God of the Bible, we have a word that really runs everything to define what or who he is. 
If you run into thousands of different definitions in your daily life, you can use one five-letter word to bring it to the only one that makes sense and is actually true. J-E-S-U-S. -S, Jesus. Even though he seems to have been reduced to a couple of common sense meanings like he's a good man or an enlightened person, a revolutionary, actually he is the very essence of the definition of the word God. Now I would make a play of words using English and German here now. If you take the word run, the most complicated multi-meaning word in English, and read it backwards, you get the opposite in German. You get the word nur. This word means in German only, just. Nur Yahweh is God, says Isaiah. Nur God deserves worship, says Psalm 96. Nur God is God, Jesus says in the Gospel. You should obey authorities and pay due respect and taxes to them, but Nur God is God. Render to God the things that are God's. Faith, worship, honor, fear, and love. Actually, your whole life. You are a coin in Jesus' hands as the parable goes. You were found by him and now your whole life is rendered to him. As our lives run day to day in different directions, we need to run our thoughts in a way that we don't run around in different types of meanings, eventually accepting them. That would in the end make us run out of strength or even willingness to listen to the real God, the one who runs the whole world, the creator, savior, and sanctifier of our lives. He came to us in flesh, in Christ, to run in our place the race that will, would ultimately lead us to hell. But he took everything on him so we could have forgiveness and peace. Now we can run daily to the Father's arms for shelter, rest, and restoration. We can keep our hearts running on his love because we run Nua to him. If we don't reduce the meaning of God to Christ, but rather try to wrap our heads around different meanings of what God could be, just to be in compliance with the spirit of our time, then our possibility of salvation is not reduced. It's over. We will run like hell to give meaning to our lives, but we will end up running dry. God means Christ. Christ is the meaning of our God, because that's how he reveals himself to us in Christ, the Word of God. And by faith, he brings the other meanings into our lives too. Love, forgiveness, tolerance, peace, justice, and all principles and values that we uphold in our lives. Now, we can also say there are specific meanings, things that make sense only to you. Like when you have to faith, face the death or a loss of someone you love, sickness, when you have to face pain, when you are overwhelmed with joy, when you have reasons to celebrate, by faith, Christ becomes yours. Then, you and I, we will never run out of meanings and applications of God's word to our daily life when we are, remember, Nua in Christ. In Him is that our happiness runs endlessly. So what's the most complicated word in English? Well, maybe you'll say it's not run, but sorry, or forget, or patience. Maybe you have your own path peeve, your irritating word that you just can't say or even can hear it. But we know the best and more powerful three-letter word we can have, God, Nua Him. There is no other. In Christ, He brings meaning, hope, and direction to your life, to my life, to life of all that are connected to Him by faith. We can keep running the good run of faith, the race Jesus ran and completed perfectly in advance of our running it. He both runs with us and stands at the end of the race when we will run through the finish line. When this makes sense in your life, when this has meaning to your life, that's when everything else falls in place. 
Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus for life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We gather together our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that now return to you. We pray that by them more people would come to know Christ Jesus and have their faith and hope and trust in him. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord on behalf of his church and for all people as they have need that we may be content with what the Lord's wisdom and love supplies to us. Let us pray. God our Father, you have appointed on earth governments and institutions that are accountable to you. Bless our Queen and those in authority over us and teach us to be good and faithful and supply the resources needed to provide for the common good. Though we are quick to judge and condemn what we dislike, Give us patience and wisdom that we may encourage and support those who carry the heavy mantle of leadership and craft and shape our first responders, O Lord, our police, fire, paramedic, and health workers, that they would serve those in need with skill and ability worthy of your love and care for all people. Keep our minds open to the mystery of your working through the halls of power, ever mindful of the fact that that you use even those we would not expect to your ultimate purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have set apart a people for yourself and washed them in the blood of the Lamb to be your own, to live under you in your kingdom forevermore. Give us faith that we may daily be restored through repentance and forgiveness and renew our hearts and spirits in the causes of holiness, righteousness, and faithfulness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God our Father, your Son has borne the weight of our sins and carried the weakness of our flesh in his body on the cross. Be with the sick, the suffering, the grieving, and the dying in their hour of need. Be with all those who are suffering due to the threat of pandemic, due to illness caused by COVID-19, that they would find comfort in you, comfort in your presence, healing according to your will, and that they would be sustained through their afflictions. We pray this for all of these. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have loved and chosen us according to your mercy and called us through the living voice of your word. Grant to us the healthful spirit of your grace that what you have begun in us may be brought to completion when Christ appears in his glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend all things to your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, trusting that you will hear us and answer us through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It's good to have you with us. For those of you who are local to the Regina um, area where Mount Olive Lutheran Church is, uh, a reminder to you that we do have our Thursday morning Bible study um, started again. So in order to attend that, uh, you need to call the church office in advance and uh, see if there's a spot available. It's at 9 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, uh, Thursdays during the week. We also, during the week, uh, do still have communion available for members who are not able to attend on Sunday uh, or who would prefer not to have communion in as large a group of people. Uh, we are following all of the provincial guidelines in terms of uh, physical distancing and uh, safeguards and cautions that we might want to take while distributing Holy Communion on Sundays. But um, I, we know that there are people who would be uh, more comfortable coming on uh, a day during the week or perhaps you have a um, uh, immune deficiency of some sort or a compromised immune system and you would like to be able to attend when it's just you and the pastor um, again uh, with the physical distancing uh, as well. So if that is you and you're watching this and you're in the Regina area, area and you're a member of the congregation or under our pastoral care, please contact the office to announce that you're coming and receive a time when you can come and see us. That's Tuesdays um, and then Thursdays and Saturdays uh, currently. Uh, watch for more information about Thursday, perhaps flipping to Wednesday evening 
But uh, please, uh, if you would like to join us in that way, give us a phone call at the church office to make arrangements to come. Those are all the announcements for you today. Uh, go in God's peace and in his joy. Thanks be to God. Sunday School sing this morning a tune, an anthem called, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. I am the church. 